All right. Hello, I'm Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Short, <laughs> Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Belinda Harris Ritter. <laughs> I got it right. And uh, she is on the Elections Commission for our, the uh, state of Arkansas, along with the Secretary right. of State. And um, I'm asking her a few questions from the perspective of a voter. And uh, the one I have uh, uh, for you is um, from perspective of a voter, I, I go to my either polling place or voting center and they tell me somebody's voted in my place. Um, what's my recourse? What do I do next? Well, you do have a recourse. You tell them, you can assure them nicely that you didn't vote and that you'd like to vote a provisional ballot. And in fact, they should offer you a provisional ballot. Right. Um, and then it gets sorted out by the election commission later on uh, whether you just forgot that you already mailed in your absentee ballot or somebody else did it um, voting for you when they should not have. Okay. So, uh, and perhaps you could a uh, little bit of extra in Arkansas, um, the, the ID requirements to vote, um, is it different county by county or is it the same state? What are the chances that somebody could actually pull off this shenanigans and vote in somebody else's um, place? Well, um, we do have voter ID throughout the state, but if somebody sends in an absentee ballot in your name, uh, it, will get logged, it might get logged in at, that it was received. Well, it would, and, it. Um, but it wouldn't be opened yet. Mm. Um, okay. And so uh, it's very possible that could happen. And when it is open, they'll see that it's um, an incorrect signature or um, an odd looking identification. And then your provisional ballot would count. Got if it. it's a situation, and I have, I have heard of sometimes this happens where somebody very early on gets an absentee ballot and fills it out and sends it in, and then they forget that they've done that. Usually sure. this is elderly people. And so they still get to fill out the provisional ballot, but only one of those is going to count, and it's going to be the absentee if it was done correctly, and the provisional vote will not count. Got it. And that way they protect their vote. Of course. So uh, just to uh, double it, this, I think I understood the, the, the um, timeline. So you're saying um, when I send in a, uh, if I send an absentee vote by mail ballot, um, it gets, um, as soon as it gets received uh, by, um, not by the post office, but by the elections office through the post office, it's logged as being received, but not opened um, and Correct. nothing's done with it yet. So they don't Correct. validate signature or anything until election day, I assume? And that's when, it's, go ahead. Normally, normally election day. This year, because of the COVID-19 situation mm -hmm. and the expected onslaught of absentee ballots, the governor did have issue an executive order allowing the county officials to open the outer envelopes starting when early voting starts 15 days ahead where they will open the outer envelope at, but not the sealed ballot that's inside and then we'll have them ready to open the sealed ballot on election day and those are always counted starting at some point on election day before the polls close but they're not released the results are not released until the polls close Excellent. and that's why it's really it'll say early vote and absentee ballots they release that information right when the polls close at 7 30. okay and they wait for the rest of it so the, uh, the inner uh, inner ballot envelope has their signature on the back they don't actually verify that signature until that election day process begins they um is that is that yeah. accurate I'm not, I'm not sure because in addition to that sealed ballot, you're going to have in there either a copy of your photo ID mm -hmm. or um, an affidavit saying that you didn't make a copy of it, but that that is really you and that information. That I, I believe it's my understanding that's going to be with those outer, with those inner envelopes as well, mm -hmm. so that um, if they're opened and there's something odd they can tell 
The problem you have is if you have them signing the back of the inner envelope, then you can tell whose vote it is. Once you separate it from that, it's a secret ballot and you can't tell who's voted it. I see. So it's important that there not be any identifying information on um, that secure ballot. I understand. So that it's still secret. Yeah, that's, that's a bit unusual nationwide. I think the state of uh, Washington has a similar process. I think there's one or two other states that have the secret ballot process that you're speaking of. But uh, excellent. So um, well, this has been very informative. Thank you for that because that, that wasn't, uh, a lot of that wasn't clear until you clarified it. <clears throat> so, um, well, thank you very much for your time. This has been Lincoln Shorts.